Hi Scorpio, welcome to December and your December Taroscope. This is Teresa from Tarot by T. So we have a full moon in Gemini this month on the 11th or 12th depending on where you live. And then we have a new moon solar eclipse in Capricorn which is favorable to your sign. And that will be on December 26th. And that's going to be an exciting new moon because it's conjunct Jupiter and it's trying Uranus, so surprise, surprise, surprise opportunities might pop up around that time. Um, but I'll get to that later. Let's see what the cards say. Oh, but before I do that, let me call in some good energy before I forget and create some sacred space around this reading. So what does Scorpio need to know about love and relationships for December? What does Scorpio need to know about love and relationships for December 2019? What does Scorpio need to know about love and relationships for December 2019? What is coming up, Scorpio? Okay, let's see what we have. The Knight of Wands, the Six of Pentacles, the Eight of Wands, the Nine of Swords, the Nine of Wands, the Chariot, the Tower, the Queen of Cups, the Three of Swords, and the Page of Swords. Okay, so the Knight of Wands is about um, travel, adventure, change of job, change of residence. So you could be thinking about changing jobs in December, or you could have some kind of job opportunity. Or you might even be thinking about moving to a new location, some of you. Um, because your current situation, if you're involved in a person, um, the, if you're involved in a relationship, the person might be traveling or it might be someone who travels a lot for their job. Because the Knight of Wands energy, um, maybe, the, maybe the person you're involved with is looking, it's either you or the other person could be thinking about moving or changing jobs. Um, this person is a free spirit. They're a lot of fun, but um, it's like they're a little bit flighty. They're here today, gone tomorrow. Uh, it could be because they're traveling. The Six of Pentacles, um, you may feel like you're giving too much in a relate. Like there's an imbalance in the give and take. Like you're the one who's always either paying or you're the one who's always initiating. Um, you feel like you're doing all the work in the relationship and this person isn't reciprocating. Um, so there is a little bit of an imbalance. Maybe you need to not, I don't know, give a little bit less or let the other person, give a person a chance to respond. Maybe you're doing too much. You need to back off a little bit to create some more balance in the relationship. Now you have the Eight of Wands here, so you could have met this person suddenly or feelings developed suddenly because this is the Arrows of Love, messages coming in. So you might be communicating with this person, but there's still some kind of, there's something that's on your mind. You have this Nine of Swords, like a worry, mental stress. So you could have been, but this is passing. So... Um, you are worried about the relationship. You're not sure if um, it's going to go anywhere. Um, but the Nine of Wands is coming up in the future here. So the Nine of Wands energy is about something that you thought you had solved comes back to be dealt with again. So uh, it's like you're waiting for the other shoe to drop or you're waiting for a problem to come back. 
Um, but the nine of wands, and you, you might be feeling a little bit frustrated. Like I've been doing all the work. I'm struggling. I'm trying to make this relationship work. And um, I just feel like maybe I should give up. Um, but the nine of wands is saying don't give up because you're you're really close to achieving a goal. You just have to hang in there a little longer. Um, not to quit. But it also can mean like you have to stand your ground and do battle. You have to um, fight for what you want in December. It's not going to just come to you. Um, with the chariot, this is another card of travel. Um, it's also a card of being scattered, like you have too many irons in the fire, so maybe you're not sure what you want. You could be deciding between more than one person. But this card represents victory through focus and discipline. So if you're doing too many things or involved in too many, like if your mind is all over the place and your thoughts are all over the place, you have to, like maybe you're worried and you're thinking all these crazy scenarios. You have to call back your thoughts and control your thoughts and focus on what you really want and cut away what's no longer serving you. Like if there's a relationship that's not working, cut it away because it's draining your energy and focus on what is working. Focus on what you want and you can achieve it. Now the tower card is here, so there could be some kind of wake up or realization about a relationship that where you t wind up um, going in a different direction. Maybe you're going to um, cut away something that's not working um, so that you can be free to pursue something that is working. The tower is, um, it helps you to see what's false. Sometimes things like, if, or if you're existing in a situation where you feel oppressed, the tower comes to break you free of that. But you might be afraid to break free. Um, but the tower represents major change. Maybe you're a little bit afraid of this major change. And you're kind of resisting it. But um, the person that you're involved with, they think very, they, they see you as someone who's very sensitive, very intuitive. Um very compassionate but I feel like you have this three of swords though um, so a part of you is like you're not getting what you're wanting from a relationship and it's it's causing you some type of heartache so you may have to have a difficult conversation with someone because the page of wands uh, the pa uh, page of swords is about looking deeply, looking more carefully into a situation and having to have a difficult conversation. Sometimes it could represent gossip or spying. So you might be checking someone out or someone might be checking you out, um, watching, you know, keeping tabs on you. Or maybe you're worried about, you know, what people are going to say or talk about you. Um, but I feel like you're cutting out, um, you're going to be cutting things out of your life that are not working. You're going to have some kind of uh, awakening where you're going to realize what to keep and what to let go of. And you're going to be really discriminating and saying, you know, you're going to be looking at everything really carefully, all your relationships, both business and personal, and figuring out what do I need to keep, what do I need to let go of? Because things, certain relationships might be draining your energy. And, um, you might be you may want to cut out the ones where you're doing all the giving and you're not getting enough back where you feel like you're being taken for granted or you know you're just uh at the worst you're being used or at the um at the best the person just ha lacks the capacity to give but you're going to look at that you have to fix that balance you're going to be looking at that um And you're going to be, you really need to just focus, stop being distracted by all these other possibilities um, and focus your energy on what you really want. And that may involve, you know, leaving some things behind 
and that may be a little bit difficult. Um, but there are opportunities coming. They've already started. You have the Eight of Wands here. This is doors opening up, opportunities. Um, you're on the edge of major change. But it may involve, like I said, um, it may involve a change, like a move. You may have to move to take advantage of this opportunity. Or change your job in some way. And in, and in those changes, you may have to let go of certain people or relationships. And that's going to be, that might be a little difficult. Because I don't think you really want to let go of certain people. But it may be that this opportunity um, requires it. So let's see um, what the astrology says. So you have the full moon in your eighth house. And that's activating, and the sun's in your second house. So that's activating your money houses, uh, what you value, what you love and value, your self-esteem. Am I getting what, I wor what I'm worth? Am I getting the love I need? Um, something may come to culmination by the full moon. Like you might make a decision about a relationship, whether to stay or go. You know, is this relationship fulfilling me? Is it giving me what I need? Do I have the intimate connection that I really want? Is this person has does this person have the capability to love, to give me the love I need? Um, and then you're gonna make a decision based on what you you know, what the full moon usually brings things to light. So I feel like you're gonna see the truth of a situation and from there you can make a decision whether to keep the relationship or let it go. The other thing, it could also be in, in a career where you decide, I don't know, I'm not making enough money here, I have to move on. Um, whatever you decide, it's going to come to completion at the full moon. Now, you have a whole bunch of planets in the third house. Saturn, Venus, Pluto, Jupiter. Um, that's the house of communication. So, um, Venus, in, you know, you may have been having intense... Um, connections with relatives, brothers, sisters, aunts, uncles. Uh, maybe you feel like they're being a little bit too cold or conservative. They're not being supportive enough. You're feeling like there's a coldness with Capricorn. And with Venus and Capricorn, you're feeling like you're not getting the love. You know, you're wanting to be nurtured. You're wanting to be loved. Um, and you're, fe you're just not feeling it. Like, your relatives are not there for you. Um, it's that Capricorn energy. Now, Venus is conjunct Pluto in the third house at this full moon. So, Venus conjunct Pluto. You could be connecting with someone that comes from your local environment. Because the third house is, uh, you know, your neighborhood. Someone who is maybe older, an age difference. or Either older or younger, because Saturn represents someone who is of a different age difference. Like either a... Uh, older or younger, it could be like a parental influence, someone who feels like a parent. Venus trying uh, conjunct Pluto, a very passionate connection, strong feelings, power struggles even. You might be obsessed with someone or feel like a certain obsession um, because Pluto is very intense. You know, the energies around Pluto is intense. But with all this Capricorn energy, it's, con it's, it's almost like it's hidden, it's restrained. Capricorn like is a restrictive energy so you can't express your feelings but you feel them you know uh, you may feel like it's hard to communicate how you feel or people don't take you seriously or I don't know because Capricorn energy is very conservative very serious so you may feel like I'm trying to tell you something and you're, and you're being like you know just too serious you're not hearing me now Mars is going through Scorpio at this full moon it's in your first house so you're going to be feeling more energetic and you're going to be feeling like taking on the world um, and it's trining Neptune in your fifth house so you might be cutting some people out but you might also be connecting with someone um, that it could be very romantic uh, with Neptune in the fifth house so you, you but you're going to be evaluating relationships in December and cutting away, you know, if someone's not supporting you or not giving you what you need, you're going to be cutting them out. But at the same time, you're going to be looking for that deep connection, that, that passionate connection. 
And Jupiter being in the third house gives you opportunity. Jupiter is going to be trining Uranus in your seventh house in Taurus. So you could have, you could like meet someone out of the blue in your, just traveling around the neighborhood or through connections, through family, um, you connect with someone. Because Jupiter represents opportunity, Uranus represents uh, unexpected developments, freedom, you know, release from a stagnation. So Uranus can bring some exciting relationship connections into your life. But you're going to be connecting with a free spirit, so you have to give that person a lot of space. Uh, it could be a good partnership, but you can't lock this person down. You have to accept that they need a lot of freedom. Um, also, Chiron is in Aries. It's going to be moving forward on the 13th. It's in your sixth house of health and employment. So there's some healing that needs to be... Uh, maybe you're healing from something or you're worried about a health issue. Um, sometimes the Three of Swords can mean minor surgery. Or it, at least it means, and especially with the Page of Swords, it can mean that you have to check, look deeper, check into things very carefully. Um, maybe you're worried about some health issue. The Nine of Swords can be worried about. But a lot of times the Nine of Swords is, a lot of what you're worried about is not, it's all in your mind. Like you're uh, imagining all these possibilities um, and it's not, I, I feel like the worry is going to be passing because this is in the past. Um, you may have, uh, you just have to keep struggling towards something, but eventually you're going to achieve it. You're going to achieve your goal. But you may have to make some major changes in your lifestyle if you have any kind of health issue come up at this time. The solar eclipse is happening in your third house. So you have an opportunity for a new beginning um, in some type of, either with uh, close relatives around the holidays. Um, you could get some prizing communication from someone maybe. Out of the blue, someone contacts you um, because here it's because the new moon it's conjunct Jupiter, so that's opportunity, and it's trining Uranus in the seventh. Um, so someone sometimes a solar eclipse can eclipse someone out of your life, but it also so there could be an ending and then a new beginning at the same time. So you might be cutting ties with some people and then starting a new cycle with others. Um, if you're connecting with someone. Mars, uh, it, it could be very energetic, very athletic, or someone who likes to do things and go places. You could be feeling really um, like taking on the world when Mars is in your first house. You have a lot of energy. So Mars was in your 12th house last month, so you might have been feeling uh, run down or um, lack of energy. When Mars goes into the first house, it's a great time to work on you know, start an exercise program, just do things, um, get out there and, and achieve some goals. You'll have the energy to do it. Um, you have Saturn and Pluto, so I think the focus is going to be around how you communicate, your style of communication, um, your uh, interaction with relatives like brothers, sisters, aunts, uncles. Uh, you might see certain truths around family at this time. But you also have an opportunity for a new beginning, to create new relationships that free you from the past, free you from past conditioning, free you from um, anything that felt like you were stuck in the in a rut. This this new relationship can bring a lot of. It can be with someone very different, um, someone that um, you could have a lot of fun with, and. I don't know. It's possible that your family may not approve of this person because they're more conservative and this person's more free-spirited. So you could have some conflicts around that. Um, but for the most part, Jupiter is bringing you opportunities. Uh, opportunities for a new beginning with... Um, with your relatives, like a new, uh, you can have a new connection or a new relationship with them or a new chance to um, communicate with anyone that you've been um, estranged from. Also, it could bring new relationships, a new opportunity for love that comes from your local environment, not from someone far, like long distance. The third house is 
you know, your local neighborhood. So you could be running around town and bump into someone and have a relationship, you know, and, and you start a friendship. So, um, let's see what else is going on. I think it's going to be an energetic time for you, Scorpio, in, in December. You're going to feel like more, um, ambitious, more like taking action, like doing things. This could also be your energy. Like you're, you're ready for adventure. You're ready for something new. You're ready to break out and break free. Um, so it could be an exciting time. It could be a time when you free yourself from anything that's been holding you back, Any, especially family obligations. And you create a new beginning in the way you relate to family and you know your local, your immediate relatives. So I hope you've enjoyed this reading. This is my forecast. Um, don't be afraid to embrace change and have fun with these new opportunities. Um, you might be connecting with someone who's very different than anything that you've dated in the past, anyone. So don't, um, don't be afraid to take a chance on something different, something new, and break out of the rut. That's my, my um, conclusion for this month of December. Um, cut away what's no longer working and, it, and make room for the new. Make room for more excitement and more spontaneity in your life. So this is my reading. If you'd like a private reading, just click on the link in the description box and we can get you on the schedule. I hope you've enjoyed this reading. I hope you have a wonderful Christmas or Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, Solstice, whatever you're celebrating. Um, I hope it's filled with love and abundance. And I hope there's a lot of um, wonderful new beginnings for you at the end of the month with this eclipse. And... Um, I want to say thank you for everyone who's supporting this channel, who's been liking and subscribing and commenting, and those of you who have ordered readings, I really appreciate your support, and I just send you many blessings for December, and I will talk to you again next month. Okay, bye now.